The unification of Europe is a success story. The Union has ensured greater freedom, peace and prosperity for every European. Democracy and the market economy form cornerstones of an open, pluralistic European society. But Europe faces many challenges. The causes of the Euro crisis need to be addressed for us to take advantage of globalization. Europe is special because of its great diversity. This diversity must be preserved. Europe should not replace other identities, it should complement them. The integration of Europe is a great achievement, but it is not an end itself. Integration is not straightforward. It must remain an open process that is taken forward by member states and their citizens. We, as Europeans, will decide what the future of our continent will look like. We need to further integrate according to different speeds and depth, where a common approach is not possible or no longer necessary due to particular national circumstances a flexible Europe of different speeds is required. A clear procedure governing state insolvency must be created. Member states need to be able to permanently or temporarily leave the Eurozone. Their possible return should be subject to strict conditionality. Europe is politically and culturally heterogeneous. This fact and structures of Europe should be taken into consideration as we seek to further develop the EU. Where the jurisdiction of the European Union is required, the community must also have the means to take appropriate action. In a globalized world, Europe can only protect its interest when it acts and speaks with one voice. Citizens, municipalities and regions should take as much responsibility as possible. This requires an amendment of the European subsidiary principle in order to elevate the scope for shared competencies to a higher status. It is also necessary to set up a second chamber for the European Court of Justice. This chamber must be able to define responsibilities in disputed cases. We demand an amendment giving the European Parliament the power of initiative. The current principle of digressive proportionality is inappropriate. It is just a fancy way of saying that the votes of citizens from smaller countries are worth more. This discrimination must be eliminated through the implementation of a single vote system. Taxing citizens remains the exclusive right of sovereign states. A common European tax policy is not desirable. Tax competition contributes significantly to the competitiveness of member states. The EU should be in control of its spending. A firm restriction on debt is vital. The monetary union can only survive if it is a union of monetary stability. The pooling of debt through eurobonds or debt funds must be ruled out as it would threaten stability. The contractual responsibility of the European Central Bank to ensure monetary stability must remain its primary objective. Its continued independence and the prohibition of public funding contributions should be strictly maintained in future. In principle, sanctions against countries not complying with deficit limits should be structured to encourage the automatic correction of failed fiscal policies. The aim of the European Union is to secure freedom, peace and prosperity for every citizen. There has to be a continuous balancing between the transfer of power to the EU level and the preservation of subsidiary autonomy. <laughs>